as you can see, I have finished my um, Halloween door banner and I used Frankenstein batting, which is just like scraps of batting that you have pieced together with interfacing. Um, I haven't used the actual um, basting tape in years. I just get interfacing. So it doesn't have sticky stuff on one side, but it has sticky stuff on the other side. And that's what I use to piece my battings together. So I piece my batting together. I have my backing complete. I basted it with spray basting and now it's time to quilt. And I am going to do spider webs. I have done this once before in my gone batty pattern. I um, did, I attempted to do um, spider webs like in the blank areas. And then I did like a really cool crochet outline um, looking thing on the bats. So I'm gonna try it again. Hopefully it'll turn out better because I had such a large space and I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing. So this, I think, I've quilted a lot more since then. So I think this time it's gonna do, it's gonna do a lot better. Um, I did one web up here and I have one web here and I did a small one over here. Um, I kind of don't like what I did here, so I'm just going to take it out. That's okay. <laughs> it doesn't all have to be perfect, and especially not the first time around. So, um, I am going to add at least two more spider webs um, at the bottom, and I think I'll take you along that journey so you can see um, how I did it. So, Welcome to the insanity. So I am going to mark a few places. I usually don't use this type of marking tool. It's um, more like a plastic um, marking tool. And so it just kind of scores the fabric. I don't usually use it, but I decided to try it out. I've been wanting to try it out, so we'll see how this goes. But I'm just going to mark two lines, and I'm really focusing on that one intersection because that's going to be the center of the web. So that's kind of what I want to connect is that center of the web. Um, I'll mark... I think two lines and then take it to the sewing machine and I will sew these lines with my walking foot and then I'm going to um, use my BRS foot, Bernina Stitch Regulator, yes, BRS foot, um, to go in and sew the web part, the little humps. Um, and that is my plan. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it goes good. Okay, let's see. First thing, I've been quilting a jacket. So I have um, a seam guide on my walking foot. So I'm going to take that off and just attach my walking foot to the machine. And that can be a little tricky. <laughs> I always have a hard time with this. So you kind of got to get a little claw around that. And voila! So now let's find a little line. Okay. I'm actually going to go. 
<coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh my goodness. I am going to go instead of pushing fabric to unquilted or pushing unquilted fabrics an area to a quilted fabric and area. I'm going to start with a quilted area and work my way out because I don't want to end up pushing fabric and puckering. And I could end up puckering <laughs> in the future, but if I can avoid it, I'm always going to try to avoid it. Let's see. I'm gonna go outside of the panel, the wall quilt, and I'm gonna not um, take a few steps. Oops, I'm pretty far away. I'll take a few steps and just knot it right, right away. Okay. And I have some quilting gloves, Christina Camilli. Um, said that you should cut some of the fingers off. So I have done that. It makes it so easy to like use your phone, grip other things. It just worked its way through the knot. And I always like to go into the threes when quilting, so that's kind of a tiny stitch. I like my stitches bigger when I'm quilting. So, that up. do that let's figure out what side I want to quilt to and from we'll do that and my center isn't exactly where the line was so I'm just gonna go <laughs> how do I want to do this I'm like a finger length away. Okay, so this will give me let's find where I was. I'm just going to put the side of my foot where I think the line is because maybe it's more than I the line goes this way. Hmm. That is quite off. So I'm just going to recreate the line. <laughs> and so I am at this angle. And we're just kind of making it up as it goes. So what you could do is just say, okay, want to do this and you can say okay I should probably be around here if I keep that line and it, if I keep that line it'll hit that center and that's what I would like to do more than anything so let's just go with it okay probably around here I did one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven. Okay. I have a lot more to do. I have one, two, three, about four more to do. So, where can we go? Go 
here, straight down the middle, we can start here, go through that, come here, and then I would end it here so I didn't go too far down. Um, so I'll end it in the face. Okay, I like that plan. So we're going here. Something I forgot to do on the last seam is I do really like getting both of my threads to the top. There's less, um, it's like less likely that you'll get a little nest on the bottom if you have both of your stitches, both of your threads on the top. And it's easier to find them to cut. A lot of people will bury the stitches. I have not done that very often, many times. And you'll notice how I kind of start from where the foot is and kind of push out to try to get stuff to lay flat and avoid puckers. And I will just take a knot and then hopefully I can get my last thread up. Seam marker. That'll work. So I'm just going to give myself a little slack, cut one thread off, and lose my seam ripper, <laughs> and pull this to the top. We're probably not going to start and stop very often in the middle of something. But, let's see, I am thinking <laughs> we're going to start and stop <laughs> again. So, I am going to take just a straight line down the back and weave out. I'm going to do a pie. So, I'm going to start right, right here. And you can tell, like, I really like thick stitches, or wide stitches, if possible. Okay, so I'm going to do a knot, and I'm going to say go backwards so I can get to the stitched line. I have both of my threads on top, so there's less of a chance for a mess on the back. And I'm going to look here and see. And then I'm going to say, ooh, let's go this way. And I'm going to pick up my foot just to, to get everything straight and nice under there. And continue on the way. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and not as many on this side. What can I do on this side? I could probably go here, so here, and let's just do it. Make sure the fabric is <laughs> on top before we do that. Okay. I'll take my knot. 
that. And again, I'm going to just kind of keep the center of the web in mind as I'm sewing. Okay. And this is kind of bumping into the side over here, so I will roll it. We're just gonna go all the way down. Whew. Where do I wanna stop? I kinda wanna stop an inch and a half away from the edge, the bottom corner. I think that will be okay. Another bump, another bump, another bump. I'm gonna stop it. You can always stop. You can go as slow or as fast as you want. And always make sure you put it on BRS one there is just a straight line. And if you do that, it goes kind of crazy. So just put it on BRS one, at least with my machine. Otherwise it'll just go possessed on you. Okay, I'm going to turn it. I think I'm going to try to go smaller and more in. So I want to 
start up here but end closer. So I want to move that so I don't do something weird with that. Mm -hmm. 